Shall we start now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. A very warm good afternoon and welcome to the validatory session of national level workshop on research and academic publication and ethics. This workshop is organized by Economic Study and Research Center, Bahana College in collaboration with IQSC Bahana College and funded by Juha Development Authority. And Dr. Rima Rabha and I'll be hosting this session. As we come to the valedictory session, I now take this opportunity to welcome our honorable chief guest and participants of the workshop present over here. Today we have with us Dr. Shantana Saigia, who is vice principal of our college as well as the advisor of this workshop. But due to some emergency, ma'am is not available right now, but she will be joining us shortly. And we are very glad and privileged to have amongst us our chief guest, Mr. Rabindranath Kalita Sir. Kalita Sir is a retired officer of the Indian Railway Traffic Service, IRTS. He belongs to the 1981 examination batch of civil services. After serving in various capacities in the country, he superannuated from the post of director IRCTC during his tenure in RVNL, that is Rail Vikas Nigam Limited. He also worked as MD and director in four port connectivity SPVs after retirement. Sir served as advisor rights, that is Rail India Technical and Economic Services Private Limited under the Ministry of Railways. OST to the Minister of State for Railways and Advisory Transport, Government of Assam, till February 2022. Educated from St. Edmund School, Shillong, Cotton College, Guwahati, and Guwahati University, he is MA, LLB. In addition, he is Multimodal Transport Management from Westfeders Economic Studies Bureau, Bruch, Belgium, and a certificate course in German language from Max Muller Verba, Kolkata. He started his career as a lecturer in Jorhat Engineering College. After a short stint there, he taught economics in St. Edmunds College, Shillong. He also worked as assistant administrative officer in General Insurance Corporation of India before joining the civil services. He has represented the country in delegations to USA, Europe, Japan, Qatar, Singapore, and Bangladesh. He has been a singer, a quiz master, actor, anchor, and sports organizer in his long career in the railways. Thank you for sparing some time for us today, sir. And I'd like to request Rabindranath Kalita, sir, to deliver the valedictory session, valedictory address of this workshop. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am, for that uh, introduction and uh, telling a lot of good things about me, which perhaps uh, uh, I don't deserve, really. But uh, <clears throat> let me uh, first thank you for inviting me over uh, to be with you today to speak a few words. Uh, tell me, uh, am I audible clearly? Yes, am sir. Audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, I, I will. Clearly, otherwise I'll put my uh, earphones on. If I'm audible clearly, then I won't. Look audible clearly, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me first welcome all of you, members of the faculty of Bahana College, students of Bahana College, research scholars, and other stakeholders and members present. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you, as I said. Uh, the subject which I have in front of me is uh, research and academic publication and ethics. Very interesting subject and yet a very complex one in the sense that there's a lot of things happening in this world which uh, involve ethics, but quite often we violate ethics. I would like to take up this uh, bit by bit. Firstly, let me talk a little bit about the ethics part. Now, what is ethics? It is, uh, you must have already in the workshop for seven days, you must have worked at length in great detail about the subject. 
unfortunately i do not know what has been discussed but whatever little i uh, will like to speak i will tell you uh, what is ethics basically it is it is basically a word which comes from the ancient greek word ethikos which relates to character which relates to character and morality uh, it is called uh, ethica in latin and in french it is called ethic and in, in english we call it ethics and this is a general kind of definition or uh, it is an understanding of the word which uh, i need not elaborate upon because uh, it must have been discussed but as i said it uh, is basically something to do with human character and maybe uh, the the science of moral duty it's a set of concepts and principles which uh, guide us uh, as to how we should behave or a failure to behave in that manner will uh, lead to what kind of consequence the dictionary meaning is uh, virtually interchangeable with the word morality and uh, it's about the moral principles of a particular tradition or a, a group of people or individual sometimes we also confuse or we we uh, in, kind of take it to mean uh, behavior in accordance with social conventions or religious beliefs or a, a set of law and we do not treat ethics uh, as a stand alone concept it actually uh, has several meanings uh, depends on which context we are talking about it could be philosophical ethics moral ethics it could be uh, something to do with a project in which we have to follow certain rules certain norms it is not necessarily only pertaining to philosophy or only pertaining to scientific temperament it could have many values and it could direct our action in such a manner that is uh, equivalent of a generic human capacity what i will do is i will present a few slides uh, so that i i would like to clarify certain things within the form of slides and then an expletive explanation to these slides so just give me a moment so that i can uh, show you the slides Can you see my slide? My first yeah. slide, which says ethics in research and academic publication. Yes, sir. Can you see it, please? You can. Yes, sir. It is. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Well, here this is just the beginning. This is the ethics, as uh, we call it, a fundamental concept. It is about human nature. It should be the central force. Uh, for multifarious dimensions of the human mind but what happens is in this world of conflicts and stresses and many uh, different types of ways that we follow quite often we uh, do not follow the ethics morality or ethics is subdued drastically we have to look at what are these factors that make us forget that we should follow ethics 100% and uh, either formally or informally we have to ensure that everything that we do in matters of our work which touch people which touch the society which touch the world must pertain to ethics so in the education system the learning of value and ethics is the need of the hour now what is research because 
the subject pertains to research and publication and ethics involving these two issues. What is research? It is a detailed study of a subject, especially in order to discover new information or reach a new understanding. Actually, if you look at the word research, it is itself a combination of re and search. Re means again. Search means search again of a, a thing that already exists. It is an investigation to gain a new knowledge from something that already exists. Research actually may be defined as a, a scientific understanding of existing knowledge and deriving new knowledge to be applied for the betterment of mankind. Um, it, is, it is in simple terms, when I do research, actually, I do not know what I will get, but I do not know what I am doing. But I get something out of it to make me know what I did. It is a search for truth or the facts. In research, basically, we search from the base what already is known to people, but then something new that we want out of it. In the process, the main driving factor of research is motivation and passion. It comprises defining and redefining problems. It, there's a process that is a, a concentration of methodology by which we do research. Now, this research is not necessarily only pertaining to academics or pertaining to only technology. It could be many fields. It could be arts and culture. It could be uh, defense study, whatever. Philosophers and thinkers think that research is an outlet for new ideas and new insights. Whereas some people may feel intellectually that it's a development of new styles and of creative work. It is a random walk, but we have to systematically do that walking towards our destination. We need a lot of creativity. We need a lot of verbal communication skill, writing skill, and of course, in-depth knowledge of the subject that are essential for, for successful completion of the work. Fundamental knowledge, sound fundamental knowledge on the subject is most important and paramount for a researcher. Uh, he must have a mind which always asks questions. The researcher or the group of researching person A should have this attitude of asking questions because it's only when you ask questions that you look for answers and the answers come. Now, in, in research, if you do not follow the basic principles, there may be misconduct. Misconduct may happen when an experiment uh, researcher, he falsifies the results. He, he may frame a question depending on or dependent on what result he's actually seeking. If you have made up your mind about a particular form of result that you're seeking and then frame your question accordingly, you will tend to fake a lot of data, fake a lot of methods, and then this research may not finally give out anything proper. Now, uh, for higher education and research, the, the whole thing starts with a question as to what the researcher is looking for. What does he wish to get out of it? Or what are the answers he's expecting? Each of these aspects of research requires, you know, to, uh, adherence to some basic ethical practices. Now, publication of this research work is the other phase. Why publication? Because when a researcher does so much work and finds out something, some answers to his questions, he would like this to be known to the world also. The rest of the world should know what he had done and what new has come out and what benefits the society may get out of it. That leads us to publication. Now, 
ethics and publication are they have to go hand in hand because anything that you do which is published has to have certain ethical standards and they have to have these standards so that the publications are absolutely neat and clean and professional they should not have any plagiarism or publication bias as a way to avoid misconduct in research these uh, principles can apply to the experiments and uh, so that the data is recorded honestly accurately and they don't dither they don't uh, uh, take red herrings into it without having researched into or without having studied them what is plagiarism plagiarism basically is a failure to give credit to another persons or authors or researchers work or ideas after all while doing the research the researcher might really have to take help of certain other works which have been done by some other author or researcher but while taking this information or while using this information the researcher must give credit to whoever has given this or whoever has found this information earlier than him uh, the critical publication ethics issue also pertains to citation plagiarism when researchers copy paste citation that's a very dangerous thing to do i mean if you if you have to copy paste entries from other published works then you must uh give cognizance to who has done that work earlier and what have you copied and pasted if you have done so the researcher bears that responsibility on his shoulders what is publication bias it occurs when the publication is one sided or it is prejudiced against the results in best practice an author should try to include information from all parties involved or all of them who are affected by the subject if an author is prejudiced against certain results it will certainly be erroneous and the conclusion will not be correct now i have set out certain principles of ethics in research and publication mind it they are not the end all and be all they are not exhaustive there could be many many more but i thought these are some issues which are important firstly the independent review in ethics and research to minimize potential conflicts of interest and to make sure a study is ethically acceptable before it starts there has to be an independent review panel and the panel should review the proposal and ask important questions what are these questions for example are those who are conducting the trial sufficiently free of bias is the study doing all it can do to protect research participants has the trial been ethically designed and is the risk benefit ratio favorable this panel has a lot of responsibilities even to monitor a study while it is ongoing let's come to informed consent potential participants should make their own decision because a lot of participants will be there in uh, in uh, the process of a research and the participants have to be given freedom to make their own decision as to whether they want to participate or continue participating in this research this is done through a process of informed consent in which the individuals are accurately informed of the purpose the methods risks benefits and the uh, various alternatives to the research these individuals must also understand this information and how it relates to their own clinical situation or interests and finally they must be given an opportunity to make a voluntary decision about whether or not they will participate let's come to favorable risk benefit ratio uncertainty about the degree of risks and benefits associated with the clinical Uh, research or a study is inherent research risks may be trivial 
or may be very serious, or even maybe transient or long term. Research can be physical, psychological, economic, social, uh, social, or you know, technical. Everything should be done to minimize the risks and inconvenience to research participants to minimize the potential benefits and to determine that the potential benefits are proportionate to or at least I outweigh the risks. Next is integrity, which is a very, very important uh, issue. Research integrity means conducting a research in such a way that allows others to have confidence and trust in the methods and the findings of the research. It relates to both scientific integrity and conducted research and to the professional integrity of researchers. Respect for potential and enrolled participants. Unless you have respect, then research results will not be proper. Individuals should be treated with respect right from the time they are approached for possible participation. Even if they refuse enrollment in a society or a study, throughout their participation and also after the participation ends. Next is uh, scientific validity. A study should be so designed that it will get an understandable answer, uh, a workable answer to the important research question. This includes considering whether the question asked is answerable at all, or whether the research methods are valid and feasible, and whether the study is designed with accepted principles, clear methods, and reliable practices. I mean, here I also would like to add that they should be made ethical. Invalid research is unethical because it is a waste of resources and exposes a lot of people to risk for no results, for no purpose. We come to fair subject selection. The primary basis for recruiting participants should be the scientific goals of the study. Not necessarily vulnerability, privilege, or you know, other unrelated factors. Participants who accept the risks of research should be in a position to enjoy its benefits. Specific groups of participants or communities of participants, uh, for example, uh, women and children, should not be excluded from the research opportunities without a good scientific reason or a particular susceptibility to risk which they should not be exposed to. Social and uh, clinical value. Now, uh, every research study is designed to answer some specific question or questions. The answers should be important enough to justify asking people to accept the whole process of research and some risk or inconvenience for others. In other words, answers to the research question should contribute to scientific or academic understanding, or maybe understanding of health, or improve our ways of preventing, or treating, or caring for people with, say, a given disease, to justify exposing participants to the risk and burden of research. Now, when I'm mentioning health or disease and all, it's just an example, it's not necessarily uh, restricted to only researches of health and disease. It could be anything to do with art and culture, it could be anything to do with academics, literature, whatever. And then finally, we have something called autonomy of research. Respect for autonomy is a principle which lays down that <clears throat> decision making should allow individuals to be autonomous which means they should be able to take decisions that apply to their own lives. Ethical decisions need to be consistent with ethical theory. Well, here again, predominantly, we have to ensure that the entire thing is ethical. Now, uh, let me take you to some examples. I mean, we have been talking about ethics. Why is ethics important in research and publication? Now, this is... Uh, the example of informed consent. Uh, the Tuskegee 
syphilis experiment, which was in 1932 to 1972. The Tuskegee study raised a host of ethical issues, such as informed consent, racism, paternalism, unfair subject selection in research, maleficence, truth-telling, and uh, justice, among others. The Tuskegee study of unrelated syphilis in the African-American male is the longest non-therapeutic experiment on human beings in the entire world's medical history. This was begun in 1932 by the United States Public Health Service, the USPHS. The study was purportedly designed to determine the natural course of untreated latent syphilis the, the dreaded disease of syphilis in some 400 African-American men in Tuskegee, that is uh, Macon County in Alabama. The subjects were recruited with misleading promises of special free treatment, which were actually spinal taps done without anesthesia, which is most essential, to study the neurological effects of this disease, syphilis. And they were rolled they were actually enrolled without without their informed consent mind you this was done without their informed consent they did not know what they had consented to but they were enrolled the subjects received heavy metals therapy standard treatment in 1932 but were denied antibiotic therapy when it became clear much later that penicillin was a safe and effective treatment for this disease they were not given this benefit Finally, when the research was halted, more than 100 of the test subjects, these people, had died directly from the advanced syphilis. So it's a very unfortunate way that things can happen. Now, this is an example of health uh, research, but it could be for anything else. Now, favorable risk-benefit ratio, uh, the example I'm citing is the Nuremberg Code uh, in Germany. When World War II ended in 1945, the Allied powers uh, who, who were victorious, they enacted the International Military Tribunal on November 19, 1945. As a part of the tribunal, a series of trials were held against major war criminals and Nazi sympathizers holding leadership positions in uh, political, military, and uh, economic commercial areas. The first trial conducted under the Nuremberg military tribunals in 1947 became known as a doctor's trial, in which 23 physicians from the German Nazi party were tried for crimes against humanity or for the atrocious experiments they carried out on unwilling prisoners of war. It's not permitted. International law doesn't permit this. The judgment by the War Crimes Tribunal at Nuremberg after the, the uh, post the laid down 10 standards to which physicians must conform when they are carrying out experiments on human subjects in a new code. That is now accepted worldwide. This code also recognizes that the risk must be weighed against the expected benefit, which is critical to avoid unnecessary pain and suffering. Uh, I have another example of independent review. Now, this is a famous tobacco racketeering. You know, tobacco is a huge industry in the world, or at least used to be. As a link between smoking and the disease became clearer, especially cancer, became clearer in the early 50s, 1950s. The world's largest tobacco companies established uh, an organization called Tobacco Industry Research Committee, TIRC. Later, it became the Council for Tobacco Research, CTR. This was uh, basically founded to fund research into the health effects of smoking. But its main goal, internal company documents now reveal, was to obfuscate risks. And very few of the studies it funded addressed the real hazards of cigarettes or smoking. Following a nine-month civil racketeering trial, the U.S. courts ordered the tobacco companies to issue corrective statements to prevent and restrain 
further deception of the American people regarding tobacco use. It stood as an example for the whole world. Now, after this, we talk about integrity, which is a very, very important part of ethics that we're talking about. Uh, I will cite an example of the Marx Chavedi, uh, they call Marx Chavedi plagiarism case. Marx Chabedi was a professor at the university in Witwatersand, Witwatersand in South Africa. Uh, he was found to copy word for word the doctoral thesis of Kimberly Lane Graham. I mean, this is coming from academics. How can people do this? When the latter found this out, she launched an investigation against Chabedi. When the investigation was proved, Chabedi was fired from the university in which he was a professor and he lost his PhD title. It became invalid. Now, there are many more cases of very important people in this world. I mean, one needn't go into details, but one knows that Senator Joseph Biden was also guilty of, found guilty of plagiarism and he had to withdraw from his presidential election campaign in 1988. Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, was accused of plagiarism in his candidature thesis, where he copied almost word to word the text of the management article written by professors, some two professors of the University of Pittsburgh. Big people like the Romanian Prime Minister Victor Ponta was accused of a copy paste plagiarism in his PhD thesis. The German Minister of Defense Karl Theodor Zu Putinberg was also alleged in plagiarism. He lost his doctorship. Arnett Scaven, who was the German Minister of Education, imagine a Minister of Education and Research, was also accused of plagiarism in her PhD in the dissertation paper. Even among editors who are supposed to be the sentinels, who are supposed to be the watchdogs of plagiarism in, in publications, one of the most honored editors of the Florida Times. Lord Brown or Lloyd Brown was he was charged of plagiarism and in the editorial content and he had to resign. Jason Blair, the editor of New York Times, he committed intellectual fraud on a constant basis. There are many similar stories of plagiarism and uh, lawsuits uh, around the globe. Now, one thing is obvious, there are many methods, many technologies and technical uh, aspects of plagiarism and then there are ways and means of finding out whether a script has plagiarism in it or not. But there is no perfect and effective system yet of 100% detection. I feel that plagiarism is uh, theft. It's an outright theft. In fact, it is uh, almost daylight robbery. Offenders of plagiarism should not be uh, they should, should not be allowed to go scot free. And at some point, ethics must take over. Now, just like doctors take this Hippocratic oath, they have to take an oath for the lifetime while they work as a doctor. Certain responsibilities on their shoulders as to how they will treat their patients, how they will go about treating everybody without discriminating, etc, etc. I feel that researchers, writers, artists, scientists, all these people should also be made to take an oath of ethics. Especially people in the academics, people in scientific research, they should be made to take an oath of ethics and sooner the better for this. I thank you very much. I do not know if I have overstepped my timing, but thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, talk to you, be with you. And uh, it was wonderful. Uh, I hope I could add some value to your workshop, seven day workshop. And uh, someday if I get another opportunity, Please let me be with you. I'll be there. And uh, thank you, madam. Uh, thank you, Principal 
I don't know if you're uh, there. Thank you, Mr. Rafiq Ahmed. Thank you, uh, Madam Shantana Saikia. I do not know the others personally, but my heart goes to everyone. And thank you very much for bearing with me for all this. Well, I don't know uh, if I have overstepped the timing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your insightful thoughts. Uh, your deep and intellectual way of imparting knowledge on ethics in research and academic publication has added glory to our event. Uh, so as addressed by Sir, uh, the, he has categorized the principles of ethics in research and publication, such as independent review, informed consent, favorable risk benefit ratio, integrity, respect for potential and adult persons, scientific validity, fair subject selection, social and clinical value, and autonomy of features. Thank you, sir. Now I'd like to request the participants to share their views regarding the workshop, which will definitely help us in our future endeavors. Over to the participants. You can share your views. Do you want me to continue in this session, or uh, can I take leave of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. We, we want you to continue, sir, actually. You want me to stay on, or can I leave? So we want you to stay on. I think there you is a network, network issue with Rimaba's end. Uh, we want you to stay towards the end, sir, please. And that is for how long is it? Uh, so it will take another hardly 10, 15 minutes. That's fine. OK. I'm here with you. Uh, I think there is a um, network issue on the moderator's end. So let me take over from here. Participants, we will be very glad if we could, one or two of you could share your views about the workshop with us today. We would be very delighted to hear from you because this will help us fill the gaps if we had any and also help us in our future endeavors. We would definitely like to hear from you. Um, anything, shortcomings, anything from you, it will be much of help. OK, Ruplekha Devi, ma'am, you have raised your hand. Please say something. Good afternoon, everyone. Respected dignitaries and all the participants of this workshop and this validated session. Myself, Rublekha Devi from Dr. Nobin Barle College, and I am from the Sociology Department. Uh, I would like to share my feelings with you about this workshop. I think knowledge is useless if it is not shareable. For the well-being of a society, it is so necessary. Uh, it is so necessary to uh, express our knowledge, thoughts, or feelings in a proper way. As a member of this academic world, we have lots of responsibilities in this regard. And through this workshop, I get a golden opportunity to think about this ethical values of research and academic publications. So I like to offer my heartful thanks to the entire organizing family, respected chairpersons, uh, uh, sorry, uh, respected uh, resource persons of different sessions, technical sessions, and all the participants of this workshop. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Ruplekha, ma'am, for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, I would like to request any more participants, if they are, to... Uh, okay, our moderator, ma'am, is back. Ma'am, please take it over from here.
Am I audible now? Hello? Yes, yes, Am I audible? Are. Yes, ma'am, you are. Thank you. Thank you, Ruplekha, ma'am, for your views for our workshop. I'd like to welcome other participants too to share their views in this same. I think no one is there. Can we move forward? Yeah. Uh, thank you, participants, for attending our workshop and your attendance and your views will definitely help us in our future work plan. Uh, now, to express our word of appreciation and gratitude, I'd like to invite Dr. Kasturi Guswami uh, for proposing the vote of thanks, and maybe Kasturi has also got something to say or announce to the participants. Over to you, Kasturi. Thank you, Rima, ma'am, for your uh, and, uh, um, like moderation. So before I propose the vote of thanks, uh, I have a few announcements. So the first announcement is regarding the WhatsApp group. So the thing is, we uh, once we finish the workshop, participants, please don't quit from the WhatsApp group because if we need anything while dispatching the certificates, we will ask for the information in the group. And second thing is, we will be opening the group for a while. If somebody has not been able to uh, put the feedback or for some session, you can post it in the group and we will try to address accordingly. And second thing we want to announce here is today that very soon we will be coming up with a book from the Department of Economics and Research Center uh, about uh, sustainability. If any of you would like to um, uh, write for a research article for it, you are most welcome. We will be sharing the details very soon in the group. And the third thing I would like to announce is regarding the certificates. So for the certificates, a form link will be shared with you. Kindly see to it that you fill your details correctly so that the certificates could be issued to you correctly. And for those who have requested for a hard copy of the certificates, Kindly bear with us uh, because it will take some time for us to dispatch and the certificate and to reach you. So these are regarding the announcement. And very soon we will be opening the group for discussion. But I would like to request uh, when we open the WhatsApp group for discussion or any message, please keep your views respectful and do not post anything unnecessary in the group that is not relevant to academics. Uh, so that would be my request to you. Now, with this few announcements, I would like to propose the vote of thanks. So I'm like I have said, I'm grateful to my department who considered me and gave me this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks. I have a long, exhausting list of people to thank. So let me begin with expressing my gratitude to the principal of Bahona College, Dr. Prasanna Kumar Dr. Sir for always supporting our endeavors and encouraging us to do our best. Let me take this opportunity to thank our vice principal ma'am, Dr. Shantana Saikya, for her support. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the head of the Department of Economics, Dr. Rafiq Ahmed, sir, for being the pillar uh, of strength for the department and guiding us throughout the workshop. Next, I would like to extend my gratitude to my colleague, Mrs. Mainumani Saikya, ma'am, for her constant support and encouragement. Uh, Dr. Rima Rabha, ma'am, who is also one of the coordinators to this workshop, I would like to extend my heartfelt and sincere gratitude. She was my constant guide and support during times when I felt I could not go on. I would like to thank Dr. Pankaj Bora, IQSC coordinator, who has on who has been with us throughout the conception of the idea, 
to making changes wherever necessary and execution of this workshop. I would like to thank Dr. Onupam Chanda sir for the tremendous technical support. Without him, this workshop would not have functioned so smoothly. Next, I would like to extend my gratitude to the moderators, Bikram Bora from Department of History, Bahana College, Dr. Himanshu Rasbongshi from Department of Physics, Bahana College, Dr. Champak Dutta from Department of Chemistry, Bahana College, and Dr. Rafiul Ahmil Lahkar, Department of Botany, Bahana College. Also, Dr. Rima Rabha from Department of Economics, Bahana College, for smoothly moderating the sessions. I would like to extend my gratitude to the resource persons, Professor Nandana Dutta from Department of English, Guwahati University, Lopamudra Borwa, Principal Researcher Gartner. Dr. Amarjiti Mohanta, Associate Professor, Department of Economics, Dibrugar University. Dr. Sushmita Priyadarshini, Associate Professor, Department of Economics, DCB Girls College. Dr. Girish Chandra Barwa, Retired Head of the Department of Philosophy, DKD College, Tergaon, and author. Dr. Jahnavi Beka, Assistant Professor, Department of Philosophy, Gohati University. Ms. Alankrita Mahindra, Publication Manager, Higher Education, South Asia, Cambridge University Press. Mm -hmm. Professor Madhijya Prasad Bejpurwa, Department of Economics, Gohati University. Dr. Murugan Patuswami, Assistant Professor, School of Management Studies, University of Hyderabad. And Robin Andranath Kalita, sir, for accepting our invitation and for eloquently delivering the uh, various sessions in the past seven days. I would like to extend my gratitude to Jorhat Development Authority for funding us and supporting us throughout the workshop through various means. Last but not the least, I would like to thank the participants with whom this workshop would not have been possible. Thank you for your overwhelming response and attentive presence throughout the workshop. If I have missed anyone, I would like to apologize. The law list is quite exhaustive. And with this, I would like to end my vote of thanks. Thank you all for being patient and joining us for the last seven days. Thank you. One more announcement, dear Kasturi. If the participants, along with Rabindranath Kalitasar, are actually also present, if they can switch on their video mode or so that we can click one picture for this validatory yes. session. Of course, ma'am, we can do that. Uh, participants, we would like to uh, switch on your videos for a moment so that we can take a picture for the validatory session. All right, participants are coming in. I think Anupam. Uh, Anupam, sir, you can click a picture Anupam for us. Done. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let me uh, just wait for two minutes. Just as the participant just switch on your video. Yes, of course. Do not post any uh, message in the chat box. Otherwise, uh, it will pop up and uh, one participant's face will be covered. Yeah. So do not post any message. OK. So few participants has uh, opened their video. So let me take your photo. Okay. Just a minute. Few more has come. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very you much. Sir, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.